Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be carrying on this sound design series by looking at some essential bass sound design. I'm going to be introducing and looking at four simple bass tones, the 808 bass, a punch or pluck bass, a saw or growl bass, and a simple sub bass. Before we get started, all of these bass tones sound like this. So those are the bass sounds that we're going to be looking at in this video. I'm going to be introducing the sound to you and briefly showing you how to create it from scratch using a synth. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using Serum, which is a third party synth. While Serum is not a stock plugin, I do think that the graphical interface really helps everyone, beginners and advanced users, actually understand what's going on. And you should be able to take all of these fundamental concepts and apply them in any synthesizer. But without further delay, Let's just get right into it. The sound we're starting with is that 808 sound, which originates from the TR-808 drum machine, but a modern 808 bass is actually quite removed from that original sample that producers used to use. Eight or nine times out of 10 when you hear an 808 in a track, it's usually a producer using a sample from a sample pack or from their own sort of a library of sounds. For instance, I have a sample of an 808 bass from a decap drum pack, if I just play it here. And all I do is just drag that onto my channel rack, open up a piano roll, and I just manipulate a pattern until it sounds the way I want. And that really is how most people would use an 808. But there are producers who like to synthesize it from scratch, and this gives you just a lot more control over the sound, which is what we're going to do. And there's loads of different ways to make an 808 more punchy or more gritty or dirty, but we're going to go through all of that, so don't worry. So I'm starting with an initial patch of Serum, just a clean patch. And the first thing we're going to do is we're only using one oscillator and I want to select a sine wave. So in Serum, I'm going to go into basic shapes and there it is loaded up as a sine wave. So if I play this, that's what I get when I play in a lower octave, just a really simple clean sub sound. The next thing I'm going to do is shape this envelope. So I'm going to take the attack all the way to zero for now, just so that I get a bit more punch out of it. I'm going to take the hold to about three or four hundred and then I'm going to turn the decay to one and a half seconds and the sustain all the way down so you can just copy these values here and what this gives us is a, a punchy attack it holds and then it decays down just like this now you can hear a little bit of a click at the start of the sample so I'm just going to increase the attack a little bit until the click goes away so that is the basic sort of fundamental tone of the 808. Now what I like to do is add a little bit of uh, sort of distortion to the wave table. So what I do is I usually turn like bend plus or minus on, and then I just warp it a little bit like this, just to give it a little bit more character. This next step is really crucial if you want a really punchy 808. So I'm gonna go on to a different envelope, in this case, envelope three. You can simply copy the settings that I have here. Attack 0 0.5, hold 0, decay I'm going to take down to about 35 milliseconds, 34. Sustain I'm going to take down to 0% and release I'm just going to leave on 15 milliseconds. So I end up with this really short sharp envelope and then I go to my matrix and I'm going to set the source to envelope 3 and the destination to global master tune and what this does is it uses this envelope here to quickly modify the master tune, which gives a really sharp sort of punch kick drum sound at the start. So if I increase the amount, so that's too much, but somewhere around about there, when you get it sitting somewhere in the middle, you can get like a really nice kick sound at the start of your 808, which can really make the 808 feel a lot more punchy. The next step is to go into your effects. Now this doesn't have to be within the synth. This could be on your channel rack or in your just effects rack. And the first thing I'm going to do is add some distortion, just some tube distortion. Just going to drive it a little bit. 
take the mix back a little bit and you can drive this as much as you like i've heard 808s that distorted you can do whatever you want with it really so just a bit of distortion to make it interesting and then it usually doesn't hurt to add a little bit of eq uh, take it down to maybe like about 100 hertz and then just boost it up a little bit just to get a little bit more boom out of that low end and that is really the fundamental basis of this whole sound. Now, if I play it along with the rest of the beat I have here, now the only issue I can hear is that my kick drum is really, really punchy and the 808's also punchy. So I could address this with side chaining or I can just increase the attack on my 808 sample. So maybe around 80 to 100 milliseconds. Let's see what this sounds like. So overall, it sounded quite punchy, but that was because this kick drum was providing all the punch I needed at the start of the sound. Whereas the 808 just fills in the gaps. So while side chaining is essential, sometimes you can just adjust the attack of your 808 a bit and it just makes it naturally fit around the kick without the need for too many plugins. A final touch for 808s, which is a little bit more advanced, is just creating another envelope to adjust a filter, a filter cutoff, that also just adds a little bit more punch and pluck to the sound, but it's really not essential for this. And if you watch my other sound design videos, uh, you'll learn exactly how to do that using this synth. It's very straightforward. The next bass sound that we're going to be looking at is a punch or pluck bass that's sometimes called a house or a deep house bass, just because of the genre it's typically used in. And this bass is really commonly used with sort of like four on the floor, kick and clap dance rhythms. And as the name suggests, it's defined by a really punchy, plucky nature. So let's take a listen to it by itself and then with some drums. So let's create this sound from scratch. So again, starting with an initialized preset, uh, what I'm going to do is just select a wave shape. I'm going to select basic shapes. Now this works with a lot of different wave shapes, sines, saws, squares, but I'm going to do it with a square wave just to keep it different. And initially this is going to be really, really uh, buzzy and loud. You might have noticed earlier that we had a really wide pluck sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to have one low oscillator that's just providing a steady mono bass. And then later on, we're going to add a second oscillator that's going to be playing some higher frequencies and they're going to be stereo spread just so that our sound still feels really solid, but also sounds really modern and wide. I'm going to change the voicing at the bottom here to mono so that we're not overlapping any notes. And what I'm going to do is turn this filter on and I'm going to select a low pass 24 filter. Now I'm going to shape this envelope to adjust the uh, ADSR of the sound, so the volume shaping of the sound. So I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of attack. There's going to be no hold on this sound because as soon as it gets to maximum, I want it to cut straight back down. So I'm going to then take the sustain all the way down to about here and then add a little bit of release to the sound. So let's hear what this sounds like. So we have the volume shaping, but it really does not have any punch or pluck to it. And that's because we need to automate the filter. So I'm going to take this same envelope and just drag it onto the filter cutoff. And I'm going to adjust this until it sounds good. Initially that sounds okay. I'm also just going to drive the filter a little bit. This adds a little bit of sort of saturation to the filter. So that sounds really nice, really clean. Now the second thing we're going to do is add a more interesting oscillator at the top. So for this, I recommend just testing out lots of different wave shapes. There was one that I found in here that I quite liked, and I think it was Paul, uh, PWM Juno. And then with this one selected, I'm just going to increase the voices of unison. I like adding, you know, maybe five, maybe seven voices of unison, something like that. And let's just see what this sounds like. Now I'm going to make sure the oscillator B is also going through the filter here. I'm going to pitch that up an octave. And then I'm just going to adjust the level. So if I now just play the second oscillator on its own, just make sure the detune amount is right. You've got a really nice wide sound, but because there's not a lot of bass in this sound, it's not really muddying 
this really solid sound here. What I like to do with this sound is add a little bit of reverb and delay. So I'm just going to turn the delay on, turn the reverb on, and let's just hear what this sounds like. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do just looking at the reverb is just adjust the low cut so that I'm not getting too much low end on the reverb. Just something interesting like that, and then I'm going to adjust the delay here. the mix down a little bit. Adding a little bit of reverb like that can really help fill out this sound. Now you've got to be careful with reverb on the low end. Sometimes it's better to add this with a separate plugin where you can really cut the low end out of the reverb. That kind of goes quite a long way in making it sound a little bit more professional. Then what you can also do is add all sorts of different, you know, stereo widening plugins and whatnots. But you've got to be careful with these on bass sounds. Usually, you know, everything below about 100 or 150 hertz, it's generally quite good to keep that mono. There's no set rules sort of set in stone, but when you're starting out, it's good to keep that in mono so that you can really keep a check on your mix. And then if you want to go crazy with stereo widening, feel free, do it in the higher frequencies. It tends to sound better that way. The next bass we're going to be creating is a saw or a growl bass, specifically a side chained bass because it sounds really, really cool. So this one is really straightforward in Serum at least because the default wave shape is already this sawtooth wave that we want. So if I just play that initially, that does not sound uh, too great. So what I'm going to do is add a filter just to take off a little bit of the high end. Now I'm going to add in the second oscillator. I'm going to increase it to quite a few voices of unison, maybe seven or eight voices, detune them slightly. Again, I'm going to select mono voicing. And already we have this really super wide sound. With the ADSR, it doesn't really matter too much. I would just say make sure that your release is very short because you want this sound to cut away when you stop. Generally, you don't want this one to die away slowly. You want it to cut away quickly. And it doesn't even matter if there's a bit of a click or pop at the start because this sample is so abrasive and aggressive that you probably won't notice it anyway. What we are going to do, however, is make the LFO control the volume so that we're going to sidechain this sound. So I'm just going to go into this folder and I'm going to select a sidechain. This one looks okay. And then I'm going to link it to the levels here. So now if I just play this one, it's sidechaining up. So it really fits around that kick a lot better now. And I'm going to do the same thing for oscillator B. So I drag the LFO onto this and then I just drag the start back to there, lengthen it a little bit like this, and they should both have a side chained effect to them right away. You also want to make sure that on your filter, you have B going through the filter as well. And then what I like to do is set up this cutoff as a macro that I can control. So I can just control it from here, but what I quite like to do is to set up a macro just here so that I can control it from this macro down here. So if I press play. So that's a really simple and quick sound, but it also sounds pretty professional. Tuck it under your track and it just can be a lot more interesting than just a simple sub bass sometimes. Again, with the effects and the processing with this, sometimes adding some subtle delay and reverb can work really, really well. Sometimes I set the delay and reverb up on a macro just like I did there, and then I can sort of blend the reverb and delay from the front panel as well. Another thing to note with uh, this sound in particular, I find that if you go onto sort of your global tab and you adjust the oscillator setting to the highest quality possible, it often stops any weird stereo artifacts happening and just keeps the sound really, really clean. 
and also with this sound it can sometimes sound a little bit thin and buzzy what is interesting is that although this is a distinctive bass sound what makes it distinctive has nothing to do with the low frequencies it's all that high buzzy frequencies so sometimes just grabbing an eq and boosting the low end just a little bit or or quite a lot even if i go to say 140 hertz and just boost a bit that really just thickens up the sound maybe a bit too much but you know it makes it sound a bit more like a bass again as opposed to like a mid-range kind of instrument and last but certainly not least the final sound we're going to look at is a simple sub bass so again with any synth this is really straightforward i usually select a sine wave so basic shapes and sine wave or there's one inside serum called analog bd sign that sounds really really great one voice of unison pitch it down a little bit inside your oscillator or play lower down on the keyboard adjust the attack so that there's no clicking and adjust the release so that it dies away not quite instantaneously so if i play this for you i'm going to show you why it's important to have that attack at you know around five milliseconds or so so that's nice and smooth if i take it down but if you don't you get that little click at the start so you just want to make sure there's a tiny little bit of attack on the sample and it's the same with the release you don't want to hear that click at the end and again with all these bass sounds it's often great to stick it onto mono mode and this just means that when you play multiple keys they're not going to all overlap so for instance if i play a couple of keys here they're all just going to smoothly flow from one to the other whereas if i take mono off we're going to get that kind of thing going on when we overlap keys and you don't want that so just keep it on mono simple absolutely lovely so thank you very much for watching the video that covers all four basic sounds all those presets are in the description along with much more information and as usual there will be more advanced videos on these topics and there's many many more advanced and basic videos on the channel if you're interested in finding out more but thank you very much for watching I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.